Everything about Erling Braut Haaland is excessively mind-blowing. His goals, his speed, his size and even his diet will raise your eyebrows. Since the Norwegian marksman burst onto the scene a few years back, he hasn't skipped a single beat, and he has now grown to become one of the deadliest strikers the sport has ever seen. He has some really mind-blowing goals in his catalogue for sure, but did you know his lifestyle is just as crazy? Come with me as we look at the insane lifestyle of the Terminator named Erling Haaland. First, let's get familiar with Holland's journey. The Norse god was born on the 21st of July 2000 in Leeds, England, where his father was plying his trade as a professional footballer at the time. At the age of three, Erling then moved to Brine, Norway with his family, and that was where his football journey officially began. He started playing football at a very young age, joining the Brine Academy at the age of five and working his way up through the ranks. He eventually broke into the first team in 2016 at the age of 16. Then at 17, he moved to Molde, spent two years there and then moved to RB Salzburg in Austria. But before he signed for Salzburg, he joined the Norway Under-20 team in Poland for the Under-20 World Cup. And that was where he really announced himself to the world, scoring nine goals in a single game against Honduras. He kept up that form at Salzburg, scoring a hat-trick in the first half of his Champions League debut, among other incredible feats. With all he kept doing in Austria, he caught the eye of Borussia Dortmund, who quickly swept in and signed him in December 2019. At Dortmund, Haaland played a vital role in the team's 2020-21 DFB Polka Triumph his first major trophy. He broke more records, scored more goals and finally joined Manchester City in the summer of 2022. Throughout his career, Holland has set numerous records and won several individual awards. He was the top scorer of the Champions League in the 2020-21 season and he also won the Golden Boy Award in 2020. In 2021, he was named the Bundesliga Player of the Season and was included in the FIFA FIFA Pro World Eleven in both 2021 and 2022. But moving to England in 2022, he has looked like he wanted in 2022 and times and over. In just his first season in England, he has already broken the record for the most goals scored by a player in a single Premier League season. He also became the fastest player to score two, three and four hat-tricks and the first player in the league's history to score hat-tricks in three consecutive home games. Yeah, this boy is a cyborg, a footballing Terminator. But here's the thing, this Terminator doesn't just wear leather suits and move around on motorcycles, he actually loves the finer things in life. He's a baller on and off the pitch, and with a weekly salary of a little over $473,000, you better believe this dude can afford the best of the best. After sealing his transfer to Manchester City, Holland quickly made his way to Paul Pogba's $4 million mansion, complete with all the amenities one could ever ask for. The two players have the same agent and apparently the same taste in architectural design. With a heated swimming pool, sauna, gym and an indoor football pitch, this is truly a footballer's paradise. Pogba was on his way out of Manchester last summer while Holland was coming in, so it made for a perfect baton exchange, more like key exchange in this case. And we're pretty sure one of the things that attracted Holland to this mansion was the massive garage, because this guy has a crazy collection of cars and needed to have a place to park them all. Now, when it comes to cars, Holland doesn't just go for flashy, he goes for machines that are built like him, you know, efficient, high-powered and fast. From his 120,000 Mercedes AMG GLE Coupe to his Audi RS6 Avant and his all-black Range Rover Sport, which cost him $150,000 each, every one of Holland's cars seems to just match his personality perfectly. But despite him obviously prioritizing efficiency, he still decided to splurge on his Rolls-Royce Cullinan, which cost him about $400,000. Crazy, isn't it? And if you really want to see crazy, come check out what Erling Haaland puts on his wrist. This lad's wristwatch collection is completely out of this world. 
He owns a Daytona 50th anniversary Rolex, which is worth over $200,000, and a GMT Master II Everose Gold Rolex worth $45,000. But the Audemars Piquet Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar, which is worth about $645,000, is most likely his favorite. In the world of watch collecting where rarity and exclusivity reign supreme, the Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar, with only 300 pieces ever produced, is a prized jewel. What sets this watch apart is not only the highly sought-after salmon dial, but also its construction of lightweight titanium rather than the more common steel, white gold or platinum. Holland also owns the Patek Philippe Nautilus Moon Phase, the Vacheron Constantine Overseas Pink Gold, the Rolex Daytona Eye of the Tiger, the Rolex Submariner Smurf, the Audemars PK Royal Oak Jumbo Extra Thin, and the Audemars PK Royal Oak Double Balance Wheel Open Worked. Altogether, these timepieces cost close to $4 million. Now, with this dude, time really is money. Holland loves watches so much that he got one each for all his Dortmund teammates and club staff as a farewell present when he was leaving the club. And he could have bought any watch, but nah, he made sure he got nothing but the best. He got 33 Rolexes for his teammates, each one costing him about $15,000. And then for the staff, he got Omega wristwatches, which cost him about $7,000 each. This lad spent close to a million dollars on all those watches. Now, just imagine what gifts he'll get for Pep Guardiola and the rest of the guys when he's finally ready to say goodbye to Manchester City. He might look mean on the pitch, but Holland is actually such a super sweet fella, and his insane lifestyle obviously involves a lot of giving and charity work. But we just cannot go without talking about this dude's otherworldly diet. It's part of his lifestyle, isn't it? This guy really feeds on the hearts and livers from special cows. He claimed that it is important to eat quality food that is as local, organic, and healthy as possible. And for him, that means a Hannibal Lecteresque diet. Well, I don't care how healthy it is, I'm surely not eating a cow's heart. But, well, I'm also not scoring 50 goals a season on the biggest stage, so I guess that explains it. Listen, Holland is a football phenom. Even the absolute greats of the sport speak of him like he is a mythical legend, a creature of lore, a behemoth of the abyss. They speak of him like he's Thanos coming to conquer the football world and acquire records and awards like their Infinity Stones. Arsene Wenger deems him a monster, while Jurgen Klopp labels him a force of nature. Paul Dukov calls him a freak. His stats are scary, according to Pep Guardiola, and he is just not normal in Thierry Henry's opinion. He is like a superhero in a cartoon, according to Norwegian football legend Jan Fjortoff, a prime Mike Tyson, says Troy Deeney, and a one-man wrecking ball, according to Owen Hargreaves. And it's not just football legends, the whole world has been captured by his effect. Spain's Marca portrays him as a cyborg. The New York Times say he's a glitch in the system, and most peculiarly, The Guardian calls him a ravenous Nordic goal yeti. All these descriptions might look too outrageous. I mean, how can a guy be called that? But when you look at his resume, you immediately see why he commands such respect at just 22 years of age. He's just won the Football Writers Association Men's Footballer of the Year Award for the 2022-23 season, and he still has more Infinity Stones to collect this season. The Premier League Golden Boot, PFA and Premier League Player of the Year Awards, PFA and Premier League Young Player of the Year awards, the European Golden Shoe, and possibly a Ballon d'Or in just his first season in England. Ladies and gentlemen, Erling the Terminator Holland. But before I get too excited here, do you guys really think Holland can win the Ballon d'Or this season? Has he done enough to deserve it? Does he have to do more? Let me know what you think. Until next time, hasta la vista, baby!